In today's video, I want to show you how to add AG Grid into an Angular application. The first step is for us to use the Angular CLI to create our app. We do this with the command ng new my app. We set our styling to SCSS and we don't need routing, so we'll set that to false. Once the CLI has created our app, it's time for us to add our dependencies. We CD into my app and then we need the AG Grid packages, AG Grid community and AG Grid Angular. With these dependencies installed, we can then run npm run start to start the application. Once this is up and running, we can see we have the Angular template ready for us to add our AG Grid code. Before we update our code, let's take a quick look at our package.json file. You can see our Angular dependencies and also our AG Grid dependencies here. You'll need both of these to work with AG Grid. AG Grid Community contains all the core grid logic, and AG Grid Angular contains the Angular wrapper component that we can use in our application. Just make sure both are on the same version. To use the AG Grid component in our application, we first have to add the AG Grid module to our module definition. So we import the AG Grid module from AG Grid Angular, and then we add it to our imports array. This means that we will have access to the AG Grid component throughout our entire application. Next, let's delete all the generated code from the CLI so that we can start adding our grid code. We will now add our Angular component to our template. So in the file app.component.html, we add AG Grid Angular. Then in our app component file, we will add two properties, row data and column definitions. We then pass these properties to our grid via the inputs, row data, and column defs. In our example, we want to list the make and model and price of some cars. So we're gonna have three column definitions, make, model, and price. Then I will just paste in some row data, which has those same fields, make, model, and price. Now let's hit save and see how our grid looks. Oh, that doesn't look like the grid at all. And that's because AG Grid requires some styling. To add the styles for AG Grid, we go to the top level styles file. In here, we add two imports. The first is a file called AG Grid CSS. This contains all the core layout functionality for AG Grid to work, so you must include this file. The second is a theme file, and we're going to use AG Theme Alpine. With these two files imported, we can go back to our component and add a class there called AG theme Alpine. This is how you apply a theme to the grid. Now when we hit save, we still can't see our grid, and that's because we need to provide height and width. Once we set these on our component, you can see our grid is now displayed. We can see our three rows of data with the columns that we desired. If we wanted to have a dark theme, we go back to our styles file and we update the theme. And likewise, we go back to our component and add the dark suffix there too and we have a dark theme, as easy as that. It's also possible not to use any of our provided themes, and you could write your own theme yourself if you wanted full customization on how the grid looks. But you must still have AG Grid CSS, because without it, the grid will not work. Now let's undo those changes so we can add some more features into our grid. So we have a basic grid, but now let's make things a bit more realistic. Let's see how we can load row data from the server. To do this, we'll use the Angular HTTP client. So the first step is to import that into our app.module. Then in our component, we will replace the hard-coded row data with an observable. We inject HTTP client into our constructor so that we can use it to load the data. And then in ng on init, we will set up our row data to listen to the event stream for our URL. As you might have spotted, the template is now complaining because row data is no longer an array it's an observable of an array. So we use the async pipe to subscribe to our HTTP call. Now you can see that our grid is loading data from the server and we've got lots and lots of rows. We've now got a grid with lots of data. So a feature you might want is sorting and filtering for every column. Now this is easy to achieve with AG Grid. For each column definition, we add sortable set to true and filter set to true. And now that means that in our grid, we can sort the columns and we can also filter by their values. But before you start worrying about all this duplication in your column definitions, 
we can extract common features into a default column def, and we can pass this to the grid. In this way, you can set sortable and filter in one place and have it applied to every single column. There are many other column properties that you can set to customize AG Grid. For the full list, check out our documentation. Another way to customize the grid is via grid options. You can pass these directly to the Angular component. So for example, we could set up row selection and set that to multiple. And then we can select multiple rows in our grid using the shift key. Another property you might like to enable is animate rows. Setting this to true means that the rows are now animated when you're sorting, which gives a much nicer feel for the user. Once again, there are many grid options you can set, all of which are listed in our documentation. We've now looked at column definitions and grid options, but you can also listen to grid events, such as when a user clicks a cell. To listen to grid events, first of all, in your component, create an event handler. Here we're adding on cell clicked, and you can see it receives an event of the type cell clicked event. Then in your Angular component, bind this to the output property cell clicked. Now, if you start clicking rows in your grid, you'll see in the console, we are having the events for cell clicked. There are many, many events that AG Grid fires, which will enable you to customize it and build the behavior that you want. Once again, check the docs for the full list. The last thing that I want to show you in this video is how to use the grid API. So first of all, we need a reference to the grid and we can do this using a view child where we pass it the component as a selector. We can then use this to access the grid API. So for example, let's add a button which will clear the current selection. So we add a method on our component clear selection and we use our view child property to access the API and call deselect all. Then in our component, we will add a button with a click handler, which calls clear selection. Now we can see if we select multiple rows and then hit our button, the selection is cleared because we're now calling the grids API. And as before, there are many methods you can call on the grid API to control the grid, which are listed in our documentation. And that's it. We've now finished our video. I've shown you how to set up AG grid, load data from a server, and how to start configuring the grid, listening to events, and even then calling the grid APIs. If you like this video, check out the rest of our Angular series, where we will show you how to use all of AG Grid's features.